Now we're on exercise five on page 43, and again, we'll go through the, the um, ECG from left to right. Uh, there's no ST elevation in two, there's no ST elevation in three, there's no ST elevation in AVF, so we can rule out inferior wall MI. There's no ST elevation in V1 or V2 or V3. Uh, there's no ST elevation V4, V5, um, or V6, and therefore we don't even need to look at one in AVL, but there's no ST elevation in one AVL. So uh, looking at the rest of this ECG, you know, we have um, a P wave, a narrow QRS, a heart rate, which is within normal range. We look at the rhythm strip down the bottom here. This, here's a ECG. Uh, QRS that falls in a dark line. We have a heart rate of uh, 300, 150, 175, well, roughly 73 beats per minute. Uh, but what's interesting about this ECG is this wandering baseline. So we just have this wandering baseline. And I threw this in because sometimes a wandering baseline will give you the impression that there's ST elevation and there isn't. And uh, you'll sometimes get a wandering baseline because the patient is diaphoretic and the electrode's not sticking well to the skin, so the electrode floats a little bit. Um, or if you have um, uh, ECG electrodes that have uh, a wet gel in the center, sometimes if you apply it, apply it incorrectly to the skin, the wet gel spreads over the adhesive part and then the ECG slides. Or if you get um, ECG electrodes uh, onto a very hairy part of the chest and it's not sticking well, you can get a wandering baseline uh, like this. So just be aware that that's artifact and um, uh, nothing more. So you can always try to get a second tracing where you get, to get it without any wandering baseline. 